Good day ladies and gents, welcome to our next session. We're going to be looking at the design of composite structures in fire. So composite steel structure, um, steel concrete buildings, and this is part of our structural fire engineering course at Stellenbosch University. Now, in front of you, you see a typical section of a composite structure with various columns um, out of steel, then primary beams carrying the loads, and then secondary beams between those that uh, are then supporting a concrete slab. And the concrete slab is often cast within some sort of decking, um, steel decking cold formed uh, that they pour concrete into with a bit of rebar and mesh. Now these structures generally perform quite well in fire and you can economize on the use of passive protection. So we're going to be, um, well passive fire protection, so we're going to be looking at the design firstly of composite structures for those uh, who are less fam familiar with composite structure design and then looking at fire design of them. Now here we have an example of a composite structure being built. This is an industrial facility and industrial facilities it's a really nice building system and also high rises and the likes and there you see the beams and columns which have gone up and uh, those first get erected. Once they're in place then we move across to the next picture this shows an aerial view of that same factory being built where on the right hand side you've got the completed concrete floor but then here you can see this is where the decking has gone in so they take the decking they put it on top of the steel beams once it's in place then you'll have someone who goes and welds shear studs onto the beams all the way through and then once that's in place then you'll come back and cast concrete into the deck and you'll have your your floor at the end and so here is the final uh, building once it's constructed and you can see it looks like a typical concrete floor. You do have to be careful about vibrations and deflections depending on the machinery and occupancy of the structure but it, is it a fairly efficient system. Now coming along to the cross section so there we've got a typical steel beam with a shear stud on top so this helps transmit the load between the concrete deck which is normally in compression and the steel beam normally in tension although you can swap it around where you've got hogging but most of the beams are designed as simply supported and you know well you can have either one or two shear studs per beam you can otherwise have one there and one there and that especially if the uh, the decking runs the other direction. You can have two per uh, per trough. This is the trough, the sort of bottom section, and yeah, weld them through, and then you've you've got a, a seal weld them through. You can use other items, not just studs, to weld and pro uh, weld to the beam and provide connection between the two of them. When it comes to the design, this steel beam now in fire will get exposed to fire on all sides. So here you've got the fire exposure and if the beam is to be designed to resist fairly high temperatures what you'll often need to do is put passive protection around it. You'll see later we don't have to protect passively protect every beam but you can provide either a contoured passive protection or a boxing system or something and so you would passively protect the the beam there and then that then prevents the beam from heating up as fast but now the decking on top so this steel decking highlighted here that's normally quite thin steel, maybe 0.8 mil steel sheeting. That'll lose um, strength very quickly because it's a large area. It's directly exposed to fire in case of fire. So we virtually ignore it for structural strength calculations, but it is very good for integrity because even if the concrete cracks, it protects. Uh, prevents smoke and flames from passing through the slab. So from an integrity point of view it's great but structurally we, we ignore it for our design calcs that follow. Now let's have a look at the temperature through the the, the cross section. So what you will often find is that if you do have passive protection the the um, it'll heat up less slowly than exposed steel and then also due to the cross section shielding some of the rate well the the lower section shielding the upper sections the bottom flange is sometimes a bit hotter than the web and then up to the top flange which is a little bit cooler once again and some codes will take the web and the bottom flange at the same temperature some will then have a, a 
change in temperature from the middle of the web up to the top. It depends on what you're using. The slab does provide a heat sink effect to our top flange, but it does depend on how much is in contact. Because if we have full contact, that there's just a solid slab on top. It's a very good heat sink and it'll dissipate a lot of energy from the top flange. However, if there's large voids, that influence is gradually reduced. And see, refer to the code you're using for the influence of that. And let's say now this is a protected steel beam, then what you'll have is that the steel work will actually heat up less quickly than the concrete. So now the outer concrete will be at a higher temperature than the top flange, but if it, if it wasn't a protected um, steel beam, then the concrete would possibly be at a lower temperature. And now, concrete is a very good insulator, so the temperature drops quite quickly from the maximum uh, where it's exposed to fire. I've drawn a cross-section through uh, a sort of a constant position over, let's say, the full depth there. It, this profile would vary depending on where you are. I'm just going to use a simplification for now. We're just going to assume that this is a flat slab. Although, as I said, it, this temperature profile will vary. If you have a look at the temperature profile, one thing you'll see is typically the upper section of the concrete slab is still relatively cool. We can normally assume it's basically at ambient temperature. So we can take pretty much that whole section as its ambient temperature um, resistance and then design for that. If it does go above certain temperatures, you may need to reduce that strength. Once again, depending on which code you're doing, or what you're using, and also depending on which code you're using, you may have to change the effective width acting compositely with the beam because normally you assume some amount of width of the concrete to act in conjunction with the with the beam the steelwork and uh, some some guidelines say you reduce it by 260 percent of its original sum leave it so it that does vary but now once we've got the temperature if we have a look at the stress in the cross section this will vary because where it is hotter, the steel is weaker. So what you may actually find is an increase in stress into the web, and then an increase above. And then, for instance, now we have the concrete on top, which has ambient strength, assuming that the neutral axis falls within our slab. There's our neutral axis. And then, then we would have a profile like this. If the neutral axis dropped down into the steel beam, then the stress profile would change. And we wouldn't have pure compression, I mean pure tension in the, the steelwork. So this is tension. And then here we have compression in the slab. Once we've got those, we can see that we can create uh, resultant forces because we'll have a resultant force due to the bottom flange, due to the web due to the top flange due to the compression in the uh, into the concrete and so ultimately you'll have one resultant due to the concrete and then a resultant due to the steel um, T and where your compression force will equal your tension force for static equilibrium. This is assuming you've got no axial forces. This is just designing for pure bending. And then the, res the moment would just be force times distance, where this is some lever arm. And you can sum these up in various ways. But that gives a, a basic overview of how you would calculate the resistance of this beam once it's exposed to fire. And once again, you would use the reduced yield stresses of the steelwork at 600 degrees, 400 degrees Celsius, whatever temperature that steelwork's at. And so, once again, just to, to show you exactly what's happening here is, for instance, a cross-section through our beam. It's got a pinned connection. It's just connected to the, the uh, web there. And then what will happen, the shear studs transmit load as I was saying earlier, into the slab, or between the slab and the beam. So on the one side, they transfer load the one way, and on the other side, the other way. And what will happen is that you need to make sure that there are enough shear studs between the point of maximum moment. So let's say this is a simply supported beam. There would be our bending moment diagram. Between the position of maximum moment there and the position of zero moment,
you would need to make sure that there are enough shear studs in place uh, to transmit the full compression load, that C force or the T force. It would need to transmit all of that from the steel to the concrete over that distance. And that's how you determine the number of shear studs required in our, in our section. Guidelines vary. Some guidelines uh, ignore the change in strength of the shear studs. Some do suggest looking at a, a reduced shear stud capacity because they do heat up. They are cooler than the top flange, but they might become affected as the, the steelwork heats up. It depends on the geometry and um, how severely they are affected by the fire. A couple of other things just to look at when you're considering composite slabs in fire. For instance, here's different uh, decking profiles. We've got our re-entrant profile and then also our trapezoidal, which we were designing above. One thing to make sure of with these decks is that as much as the deck provides good integrity uh, requirements to prevent smoke, the passage of smoke and flames, we also need to provide sufficient insulation requirements so that the top surface does not exceed uh, the 140 degrees Celsius or the limit required above ambient. So as tip temperature penetrates through the slab. This does not get too hot on top of the slab to cause spontaneous ignition. Now, if you have a screed on top, a structural screed, you can use that, but in many cases this screed is not present. So often we just ignore the screed, especially if we're not sure if it's going to be there, and just design for the thickness of the slab. And you'll can see for these two profiles, the re-entrant sheeting will be a lot better for um, insulation requirements as opposed to the trapezoidal. The trapezoidal is really governed by this thinner section uh, on top here in the, the flute. And that may govern the thickness of your floor, especially if you need a one hour or a two hour fire rating. You might need to have a look at that section. And then continuing on the application of this, above I was designing the capacity of one beam affected by fire. Refer to one of our other videos for this section because there's a much more detailed discussion on this. But if you want to optimize the usage, you only really need to design your primary beams. And uh, those would be designed as shown above. And then you can allow your secondary beams to fail all those green ones I would be highlighting there, which would save you a lot of money in passive protection, but you would need to make sure that then the blue beams are strong enough to carry the load and uh, make sure you've, you've adhered to certain uh, detailing requirements with rebar and, and other requirements. So that's tensile membrane behavior or slab panel method. So as I said, you can refer to one of our other videos which covers that in more depth. But that gives an overview of the design of composite structures and firewalls, specifically composite beams. You do also get composite columns and uh, concrete filled steel columns and various other composite systems. But this gives you a basic understanding of how to go about the design of them. Thank you.